So I'll be hijacking or remixing or abusing, as I decided to do, the POEX digital archive, uh, or at least show you how I've done it uh, and how you can do it yourself. But I also need to provide some background, so uh, I will start with a couple of uh, things about digital archives, which is a word or an expression that you'll hear me a lot. Uh, I'm not sure that you need that. I'm not sure that I do need that. But I mean, that's what it's required here. Um, so. Uh, I think we are facing with electronic literature a new textual condition, one that remediates previous artistic and experimental and expressive practices. Uh, and so we are dealing with what we might may call this fluid or procedural nature uh, in literature, which is variable in the sense that is not fixed. It is performative in the sense that it abolishes this idea of the literary. Uh, it is indeterminate uh, because most of the scripts that uh, enact these texts are uh, uh, random and aleatory. It is processual, uh, programmed, and multiple. So because we are dealing with a new textual condition, my question is, do we need to uh, adopt a new form of archive? And indeed, digital archives provide apparatuses uh, which are more versatile than uh, books. They constitute media ecologies in the sense that we have a complex network of multiple files. And they, they, are, uh, they imply uh, in their ontology openness and multimodality. Uh, so I think that these knowledge sites, the expression is by Schillingberg. Uh, these knowledge sites, they constitute mechanisms uh, for the production and the acquisition of knowledge, okay? So digital archives, they constitute environments, new material environment, environments. They are not, they cannot be closed entities, just like normal archives, so they need curation, in this case, digital curation. Uh, they are also reading environments with everything that reading involves. And in that sense, they constitute powerful tools for several uh, types of research in practice. Um, so in a way, they are malleable, open, fluid, and I'd like to stress these words because that's what constitutes my approach to remixing or hijacking the archive. Uh, finally, these sites for theoretical and practical research uh, allow me to explore their complexity uh, in three, at least three uh, ways, and that's what I will try to approach here. First of all, the need to curate the archive, uh, say, uh, meaning reinterpreting constantly its database assets, creating uh, different forms of understanding its contents. Second, appropriating and remixing the archive in the sense that uh, of abusing or hijacking the database for artistic and creative remixing. And finally, by creating thematic exhibits such as the ones that I will hopefully be able to show you. So I've been working a lot with digital archives. I created the Portuguese uh, digital archive for experimental literature where concrete visual sound poetry but also digital literature and early experiments and pioneering experiments in combinatory and generative literature were rep are represented so we are we organized classified digitized represented remediated thousands of media that were fragile, difficult to access, and now everything is available for new PhD students that can <laughs> therefore study these rich contents. Uh, but we also use the opportunity not only to represent, but also to create extra packages, so to speak, with retextualizations, for instance. One, is, one simple example, you have a very early literary algorithm from the 70s 
uh, created by hand or with the imagination, uh, which is tudo pode ser dito num, num poema, everything can be said in a poem, which was a poetic algorithm to create a combinatory uh, poetics. And so we have that as the remediation of the page, but then with our own software, we have cre recreated this uh, poem or multiple poem by generating, live generating with software uh, its content. So it's about embracing the past also and reactivating it in the present. Another example would be the puncture, punctured uh, cards of uh, co uh, computer programs and computer poems of the 70s in Portugal, which were lost in personal archives of people that we were able to meet, interview, and recode as well. For instance, with this, we were able to, uh, I was able to reprogram all of these poems, translate them and publish them in the Electronic Literature Collection Volume 3. So it's also about disseminating uh, the results of our research and articulating it uh, with the international community, which most times are, is not aware of things that are done outside their umbilical bellies. We were also able to collect pamphlets, flyers, and kind of create a genetic uh, dimension of uh, performative events, which, as you know, performance is one of the crucial issues of our fluidity in terms of archiving, because we, I mean, we cannot archive what is impermanent. And so this is one example that I have created after the funding stopped. So of course this was all funded, but after funding stopped, we have created a network of young people interested in participating. And that participation led us to start working in a network, uh, in a networked environment. So this is one such example of a very complex web page with transcriptions, interviews, articles uh, that were created after we represented these uh, events. Or, for instance, more recently, uh, I have this. It, it, we were celebrating the 50 years of a certain type of visual poems from Portugal, the homeostats. And so I just said, well, you know, these homeostats, they are freely now available for you to consult on the web. Would you like to write an article? Would you like to do a version of it? Would you like to perform with it? Of course, with the authorization of the author who is still alive. And this network of people from Portugal, Spain, Brazil, uh, contributed, and we were able to create this uh, <coughs> creative and theoretical <coughs> dossier. And for instance, me, myself, with a friend of mine, have created a generator of homeostats, one that shows how this visual expressiveness implied in this type of poems is reinscribed with digital media. So again, I understand electronic literature not as something new, but as the, in the continuity of artists' books, the, I mean, Jorge Luis Borges, The Garden of Forking Paths, The Book of Sand, and writing my own poems and programming my own poems, I feel embedded with these past uh, avant-garde, which still inform my own production. Okay? So a little bit of theory now. Uh, I have written an article with my colleague Manuel Portela and Manu, uh, Maria Sequeira on the metastructure of a digital archive. And we have come to the understanding that digital archives should perform three different functions. First of all, textual representations. We know that digital archives contain remediations, like facsimiles, text transcripts, etc. So these remediations, they need to be accompanied by data about the original documents, bibliographic records, descriptions of media, techniques involved, but also information about the digital surrogates themselves, meaning that processes, technical standards, and formats need to be addressed. So doing digital archives is not just creating a web page, you know? F more, and that's the work that I've been doing with Sandy and with NT2, uh, and I, I was lucky to participate in the CELL project. We need to guarantee integration and interoper interoperability with other repositories. And this means awareness of the protocols for the preservation and archiving of the formats. Because as you know, the web is 
to uh, constantly becoming obsolete. So the, the idea of ruins and ruining is really interesting. So I, I, I'm, I will do more things now after your presentations. Then the second aspect is contextual simulation. There is a genetic dimension in digital archives, and we need to recover the history of the production of the archive itself. But there's also a social dimension in which we can describe the history and the reception of the works themselves. So these provide all of these aspects, they provide opportunities for the creation uh, of context of this network of intertextual association among items included in the database. Finally, uh, we have the interpretative, sorry about the bug, interpretative interaction, and this includes uh, functionalities that turn digital archives into a critical environment this, for the generation of new interpretations, which was the case of that homage that we have done of items in the database that provide the opportunity to revisit this, this uh, media. So encodings, structuring processes, and programming remediations result often in the discovery of new patterns, new relations, uh, and this radial constellation of elements promotes the possibility, and that's where I try to connect with what I'm doing, for curating online exhibits, but also to reinterpret critically the assets of the digital archives. So, we can and should use digital archives in our research, but also inside uh, expressive curatorial and learning environments, opening it to new forms of artistic creation. Uh, interfacing the archive in that sense uh, <coughs> implies uh, what Lev Manovich has called the hybrid revolution. Uh, Manovich argues that the classic content and media remixes are only one aspect of this hybrid revolution. Instead, he says, what gets remixed today is not only the content from different media, but their fundamental techniques, working methods, and ways of representation and expression. So these new crossover languages, they explain what Alan Kay wanted with the computer, right? The computer is a meta-medium. And therefore, and I connect this to the avant-garde forms of literature, of the POEX digital archive, but also with electronic literature, we are dealing again with the variable, the adaptable. So presenting and exhibiting the database in, in this curatorial perspective uh, requires us to understand uh, not only curation as a dynamic activity, but also to be uh, to embrace this idea of database narrative, okay? Then we can also uh, understand the, con the need for the contents in the digital archives to have some sort of continuity, both in interpretation semantic and ontological, how to organize the items themselves. And we, as Kirschenbaum, Matthew Kirschenbaum has argued recently, we are moving from just simply capturing and preserving data into guaranteeing that that same data remains functional, processable, and interoperable. Okay? Creative remixing of data is a form of assessing this possibility. We can also use, and we definitely use, digital archives <coughs> as pedagogical tools. It's very easy to use NT2's archive to integrate and integrate it, it with uh, pedagogical technologies, for instance. Uh, we can also uh, use archives for research enhancement. Visualization tools is just one aspect of this potential, right? We can use scripts of software that reveal uh, complex patterns of relations of data that otherwise the human eye could not perceive. This is what, for instance, again, so Lev Manovich is doing with his software uh, initiative. And now, okay, so the POEX Digital Archive, it contains uh, more than 5,000, now more than 6,000 multimedia files. The images, sounds, videos, texts, scripts. So in my opinion, this material is good for PhD students to consult, but it's also important as the material to be reprocessed, re-articulated, and used for creative, uh, creative remixing. 
That's what I like to call the activation of the digital archive. Activating uh, in, means encouraging appropriation and integration. Because digital archives, they are performative in the sense that they provide for metamorphosis, for renegotiation. And they allow us to read in a new way its database assets. So Wolfgang Ernst recently published a series of translated essays uh, in an edition by Jussi Parika and uh, here in, here, no, sorry, I just came from Berkeley in the United States. And uh, he says that we are moving from archival order to the dynamics of, of what he calls the archival field. That is from static memory towards an economy of circulation, permanent transformation, permanent updating of uh, assessment. On the other hand, my, ex my own experience, and after dialoguing with my colleague Manuel Portello, who is a partner still in this process, we understand that all of these experiments in this material performativity possible to identify and create with digital archives is a form of translation, but also, and most importantly, a critique of poetical codes implied in the archive itself. And of course, we, we, we know about archives also. We love books and we love archives in general. And archaeology for us here is a new form of uh, making the technology strange, not about uh, using it blindly, OK? So these forms of transcoding, emulating, retextualizing, translating, they become acts of interpretation themselves. And that is why I mo less and less write articles in the old sense of writing articles. And I find my work of remixing the archive a cri uh, critical approach to the contents themselves. One such activity was Arquivo vivo é an arquivo, which in Portuguese works very well. <laughs> in English, it would be something like a living archive is an archive. So you can see that there's there. This word archive is suggested by Wolfgang Ernst in a very uh, weird context, and we appropriate it. Uh, and what I have done with Arquivo vivo é an archive was I had these anarchist bookstores saying, oh, man, you have this wonderful archive, but it's only for scholars. Come present it to the people. And I started thinking about it, and then eventually I said, OK, I'll do that. So I prepared this huge amount of data and uh, organized, uh, uh, curated exhibits inside, in using the contents of the archive itself. And in five, uh, six different sessions, which I call text, image, text, 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 sound, text, space, and text code, we, re we presented, dialogued, and then remixed. I invited artists, VJs, uh, coders, gamers, to use the contents, uh, creating softwares to kind of destroy them, so to speak. So in text image, we have presented the labyrinth, the anagrams, visual poetry, copy art. In text text, we concentrated on consolation, concrete poetry, spatialization. In text sound, sound poetry mostly. Text space, installation, performance, spatial poetry. And in text code, the electronic literature. So as you can see, we have a lot of different uh, forms of poetry in our archive. This is the poster. The bookstore is called Stray Cat and is owned by a copy artist from Portugal who is also represented. And then the thing was to tape, videotape it, represent it, invite people to write drawings about it, and then feedback the archive with the experiment. So it's a kind of a circular, circular experiment. Here I am doing it with a VJ, Ana Carvalho, here with a sound uh, software designer. And then, for instance, there's this artist which just showed up and she said, oh, I've heard that you are remixing an archive. Can I do something with it, too? And so, yeah, why not? So she took, uh, she was portraying our activities. And then in the end, she offered us a box full of small flyers and objects that represented me doing this to my bird and stuff like that. <laughs> it was very interesting. 
So it's about this circular thing. And then there was also uh, an activity in which we programmed a, a very complex multimedia environment, which is somehow outlined here with uh, inside using Unity, but using mostly also gesture-based interaction. Uh, and uh, contents of the archive were uh, lively, uh, were remixed live. So I'm sure that I'm running out of time, right, Gabriel? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. So I'll show you these scripts, which were the thing that I really like. I could activate them now for you to see, but I would have to use my own computer. So I have these things represented in the archive, so I'll just show them to you. Uh, and there's these and uh, the guided visits. So these scripts, so the guided tours, for instance, we are interested now in uh, portraying uh, exhibits of concrete poetry and invite people to write text, to videotape, and then represent them online. So for instance, here you have a very important Portuguese poet, Antonio Barros, with videos, as you can see, documentaries, etc. And then all of his works, all of the works that you are see here, these are fragments of the archive itself. And then they are kind of transformed by the author himself. So this is Antonio Barros. This is a very long page with his ob po poem objects, <coughs> concrete poems, etc. In performative iter iterations, meaning that the author himself recreates his own work for the archive, which is very interesting. I have like thousands of emails which I exchanged with these authors for the composition of the archive itself, <coughs> its actual reception. We also do some uh, interventions, for instance, in t uh, June the 10th, it's the <coughs> day of Portugal, Camões, our Shakespeare, or something like that, Camões and the communities. And so we have created this web page. And during this day, if you accessed the website, it would, and from anywhere, it would show for five seconds this work, which is a very interesting work about immigration. POEX is the acronym for experimental poetry. That P that you see is also Portugal in old cars. And X is ex-Portuguese, and this was in a context like one week after our prime minister, our uh, uh, ex-prime minister, said that Portuguese, if they are not happy, they can emigrate. So you, we have collected from the archive all the political and interventional works that we have in sound poetry, visual poetry, dialoguing with the authors themselves. This is what I told you about the uh, Polish uh, painter that just showed up and she started drawing us um, with several different interactions and objects. And these are the scripts. Okay, so these are real scripts, real viruses that we have programmed with the help of Nuno Ferreira. Uh, this is a first, the first appearance of the web pages that I created for Arquivo Vivo e Arquivo. And then after I activate the scripts, if you consult the website, it will be, so here you go for the code, and then the archive becomes this, live. So if you access the archive, it will be, the, its contents will be randomly changed and uh, hijacked, so to speak. Then this one, and always in a different way. So this is how we can, it was one of the possible remixes of the archive. And then in the end, this session uh, ended with this Fade Me, which is a script that progressively deletes word by word the contents of the archive until it becomes blank. Thank you.